Welcome to the channel. My name is Matias. Today we're going to talk about Paradise X issues one through three. So without further ado, let's get into this. So at the end of the big introductory zero issue, we get the big reveal that we have the original Guardians of the Galaxy, the ones from the future. They have arrived to the past, but do not understand what the hell happened to Earth and this reality. This obviously is not their past. Some type of time traveling shenanigans have taken place. Also, adding to this Paradise X Zero issue, we had two issues called Heralds, where we had this team created by Machine Man that would jump across the multiverse, much like the Exiles trying to warn humanity in each reality of the danger of the Celestial Embryo within each Earth. Now the Heralds have finished their mission and they're in the Universe X or Paradise X Universe. X-51 has promised each one of these characters their own happy ending within the context of this reality. While all this is going down, we have the paradise that Captain Marvel had created. Where we have the leader of the angels is Captain America. His design is so freaking cool. But the thing is, we have two realities for the dead. We have the paradise created by Captain Marvel. And then we have this purgatory type of reality where we have people that have died. They don't know they're dead in the first place. They live the same cycle over and over again. And they have to realize by themselves that they've died, accept the situation, and then they can transcend into the paradise. Captain America goes down every single day to see his family. Can't tell them that they're dead. That's breaking the rules. But in a very interesting way, he wants to rebel against this rule. So what he does, he seeks out Frank Castle. He sort of tells him of the situation without crossing any lines. Frank immediately realizes what's going down. And this is going to cause some major ramifications within this realm of purgatory. Also, at the same time, we have Wilson Fisk, who's in this purgatory too. He knows that something is off. But he immediately goes back to his criminal ways. He starts organizing with other supervillains and starts gunning after the Punisher. Then we had this whole situation that since Captain Marvel had killed death, no one can die. And now we have Mephisto running around Earth, brutally mutilating people left and right. And they're in agony, they're in pain because they can't die. They can't go into the afterlife. He has left all these people in a situation of immortal suffering. We do not know what Mephisto's endgame is. We're going to discover that further down the line in the story. Now, this story has a lot of moving parts. Then we cut to Captain Britain, who's going to get married to Medusa. And this would make him the king of all humanity. Now, the big thing of this reality is that everyone has powers. This was because of Black Bolt. He blew up this Chirurgeon Mist Bomb and made everyone into Inhumans. At least the people that did not have powers in the first place. But now we have Queen Medusa without a king because Black Bolt was killed by the Celestials. And now she's going to have a political marriage to Captain Britain to consolidate this power over all of humanity. But I guess everyone's down with this. Everyone likes Captain Britain. They think he's the best leader possible. But Captain Britain still mourning the death of Megan, his first wife that was killed by the Grey Gargoyle. Actually, this villain had killed all of Excalibur. Nightcrawler was the only survivor. And he had teleported away and then had amnesia and became Belasco. That's actually a very interesting story. I also forgot to mention that there's a one shot in here called Paradise Zen USA, where we have Zen, this team that are the protectors of Japan, join forces with Doctor Strange. They go to Asgard, they're looking for Clea. She had betrayed Doctor Strange in the Earth X series, the first of the trilogy. And now it seems that she's been imprisoned there. Thor and Loki also tag along for the ride. There our heroes go up against Odin and they confront him over all his lies of all these years. Because in the Earth X and Universe X series we discover that the Asgardians are actually this ethereal alien race. That didn't have bodies per se. And they arrived to Earth and what happened is. Odin actually tricked these beings into thinking they were gods and that he was a sky father. And basically that's how Asgard and the Asgardians were born. But we discover who was behind. This is the basic origin to Asgard and the Asgardians. But we discover who was behind the lies of Odin. 
And obviously, it was Mephisto. He's the one that inspired Odin in the first place. So Odin does not want to deal with these invading forces and the danger of them awakening all the Asgardians to the slime. So he gives our heroes what they want. He gives them Clea. Also in these issues, we get a couple cool revelations like Tao, one of the members of Zen, is actually Shang-Chi. Also, we get this really interesting conversation between Shang-Chi and Doctor Strange where Steven actually explains that he casts an illusion over his hands all the time because it's too hard for him to look at his hands all broken and messed up. And in my nerd mind, I thought this was so cool that I actually imagined that 616 Doctor Strange does the same. Another pretty interesting revelation that we get in these issues is that we discover that Frank Castle actually committed... He unlived himself. I don't want to use the other word. I don't want to get in trouble. And we get this really awesome explanation on what makes Frank Castle tick. That he's from a family of Italian immigrants and he grew up with a lot of mobsters that further down the line he would go on to kill. That just by chance he went down the straight and narrow, he became a soldier, he had a family. His life was good but just by chance also his family was taken away by people that came from the same place he did. And when the Punisher started his war on crime, he realized at one moment that he was killing a lot of people from his own past, from the same upbringing he did. That just out of luck, he didn't end up being a thug for the mob. And when he reaches this conclusion is when he decides to unlive himself. Now in issue 3, we get a big X-Men reunion where we have Days of the Future Past, Wolverine, and Bloodstorm join in on the fun. When Cyclops actually realizes Banshee is also there and he knows that Banshee should be dead because because he has a psychic link with Phoenix who is one of the angels of heaven. So she let Cyclops know that Banshee is actually in paradise. So Scott immediately attacks this imposter who we actually discover is the Grey Gargoyle who's working for Mephisto. We don't know what he's up to here. So I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.